G'day folks, welcome to this overview and example play of Lock and Load Tactical Digital. And this is the digital implementation of the Lock and Load Tactical System, which has seen uh, dozens of publications over the last decade and a half, all by Lock and Load Publishing LLC. Most recently, well, well quite recently, it saw the release of uh, Core Rules version 5 as a 276 page spiral bound book uh, bringing together all these different rules. Uh, however, the digital edition introduces you to these rules quite nicely and the, the base game, which is, is relatively inexpensive, comes with four scenarios and a series of tutorial videos to guide you through the basics. Now, having never played Lock and Load Tactical before, I purchased this title, loaded up these tutorials, and I was playing this game within a matter of minutes. This is a highly accessible, uh, relatively easy to grasp tactical game. Well, the basics are at least, uh, and I'm very quickly learning uh, some of the more complex rules. Further to that, uh, you can complement or supplement this base game with a series of expansion packs uh, currently available in, in June 2020, we have Heroes of Nam, Hero uh, Days of Villainy, and Heroes of Normandy. And each of these packs comes with about 10, 11, 12 scenarios. I don't have any of these just yet. As I said, I've only just started playing this game, and it's it's captivated my attention. How 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 great it is to uh, be involved in this system. Many of these rules are of course automated by the the AI uh, or, or by the system. There is an AI opponent that you can um, play against, which again helps you with some of your tactics. Now I haven't quite played enough to know how good the AI is, but uh, it's certainly given me a, a run for my money and uh, given me something to fight against. Now the game is still in early access. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, this means that it, it's, it's um, being released to people but they should be mindful that it is still being developed uh, and it's not, it's been, not yet been f I guess fully released yet. That means that you may encounter some bugs and the developers continue to upgrade this and you, you're kind of downloading updates quite regularly. Having said that, I have not encountered any bugs yet. I'm not saying they don't exist, I'm just saying that I haven't encountered any. If you do play this and encounter it, there's a, a forum for uh, reporting bugs and, and leaving feedback on the game that the developers can uh, make a note of and, and, and adjust to. Now it's my understanding that this is a, a faithful conversion of the lock and load tactical system to the digital format. They've taken all the rules and, as I said, have automated them and implemented them in this this, uh, this, this digital version. This all and all this automation makes it great for a, a new lock and load player like myself to get into the system, start playing almost immediately and begin understanding how the different rules work, how movement, fire, opportunity fire and so forth, activations, uh, how it all comes together. And because you can't make a mistake, you can't break the rules, the system won't let you, you have to adhere to the rules. And if you have any uncertainties, you can, I guess, check the rule book or um, often you just hover over something and it gives you some more information. Often the game will tell you why you can't do something. So if you've moved and then try to fire, it will tell you you can't move and then fire. All the kind of dice rolls and automation is summarized in the bottom right. Um, sometimes there are pop-up displays when you're firing uh, and it tells you all the different modifiers that are applying and why you're sort of rolling certain results and so forth. So it's all sort of summarized there for you so you can follow along. Even things like rallying, you can do individual unit rallies to keep track of that and, and sort of monitor the die or you can just click a button to do automatic rally and all your units are automatically rolled for and the system works out the results. Now to demonstrate how easy this all is to grasp I want to run through an example of play. Now keep in mind this is the the base game and this is the first scenario from the base game using very very basic rules. This is not an indication of uh, the more complex scenarios and from what I've seen they do step up quite considerably, keeping in mind that that fifth uh, ver version 5 rules is 276 pages long. I've had a look through this and there's a lot of stuff I don't want to look at just yet. Now I'm playing the first scenario, Rejoining the Regiment, which takes place on the 6th of June 1944. It pits uh, elements of the 1st Battalion 506 PIR against remnants of the 795th Battalion. The Germans need to exit two full squad equivalents and one leader from Hex H8 by the end of turn 5. Okay, so the Germans have initiative on the first turn and they need to bring on their reinforcements. Everything starts off board, off map for the Germans. We click the reinforcements button and 
these are our units that are available and we can create sort of first lot of reinforcements to come on. We use selected units, we place where we want them to go. Now once they're on the map, we can well, click on these units and decide what to do with them. If there are units, enemies in range, we can click on them to fire, or as you can see it just shows their movement path. So with these three half squads, my plan is to move them out to the left and then end the impulse. The Americans have there go, comes back to me, I bring on more reinforcements. Under Bowman, two full squads, and you just drag to attach their guns, place them. Now these guys are going to come straight up the middle. The, my plan is to get these two squads off hex A8 down here. And I'll take the rest of the plan in just a moment first. I'll move here and I'll probably suffer opportunity fire. No! Oh, okay, so we end the impulse. Again, this is my main exit squad. This is what I'm calling my diversionary squad. Now both my units have gone. End of turn one, we pass. Okay, in turn two, I have the initiative rally phase. There are no shaken units, so we can continue. And now operations. So I want to move my units here one at a time. So I just uh, click to, well, select or deselect a unit. Now these guys are going to try. Well, uh, actually, I may just move the whole. Turn two, I'll move everyone to this spot. Suffer opportunity fire. And you can see attacker rolling five. Three, and that five, so no chips. Alright, no effect. Um, <clears throat> now, at this stage, I could keep moving. Now, the, the whole plan with this diversionary squad is to draw in the opportunity fire of the Germans. And, uh, of the Americans, sorry. Let's see if what happens if I make a rush. So you have to attack a roll, so I'll now suffer some hits. Shaken, shaken, and shaken. Okay. And the impulse. As I said, this is city diversion. So now my main squad, the ones that need to exit, click on the exit hex, straight out, and we exit. And the impulse. And that's a German victory. Now again, this is the introductory scenario. It is um, just a few small units, but you can see how um, how easy it is to basically pick up the rules. You can follow along. If if I were taking my time, I would be following along here. There'd be um, pop-ups that I'd be following. Um, you, if you want to know something, you just basically usually hover over, and it shows you their leadership, firepower, it tells you what basically all the numbers and the counters mean. So. I was playing through this very quickly. I was click, click, click. I wasn't really thinking about my decision. But it shows you kind of how quick it can be to play through a full scenario. I've just played through a full scenario of lock and load tactical within a matter of five minutes. Um, obviously, uh, I, normally I would take a lot more time to do this, but you can see just how quick the AI is, how quick the system is, how easy it is to click and move and fire if, if you really want to. Um, obviously, when you're taking your time, when you're not in a rush to <laughs> demonstrate how the game plays out. You'll take more time, you'll think more carefully, you'll consider the terrain effects. This is clearly, what I've just demonstrated, is clearly not uh, good tactical play. But what I was trying to do here is show you how easy it is to get into this game, to get rolling. Uh, within a couple of minutes uh, I, of, of starting to play this game, I understood how movement worked, how activation works, how rallying worked. It's, it's, it's all so, so clearly presented. Uh, and again, because this system automates it all, it, it keeps you kind of on those those tracks, on the railroad tracks of uh, adhering to the rules and, and not breaking off them. So uh, yeah, I highly recommend Lock and Load Tactical Digital. The base game for me is $7.50 in Australia. It's probably about $5 in the USA. Keep in mind this is just the four basic scenarios, introducing the basic rules. And then if you like it, uh, you can add these, these packs, which I'm certainly going to do. Um, I'm still getting replay. I've, I've played through the first scenario uh, quite a few times. Again, not enough to develop advanced tactical knowledge, but sufficiently to, to know the rules, to know the basics, to know how things work. Now, there's another great thing about uh, these digital implementations, and that is that they uh, ignite interest in the physical copies of the game. I started playing this, and um, maybe within one or two hours of playing this digital implementation, I went onto our local uh, board game markets and I was looking for copies of. Uh, 
some of the titles in this series. And I'm now interested in, in seeing if I get some, some more and, and picking these up and introducing my friends to the game. So, yeah, th this kind of serves as a, a broader marketing purpose for, for these companies. If you can you know, expose broader audiences to these tactical war games, you'll not only sell these digital games, but you'll also promote interest in the, the physical board gaming hobby. And that's what this has done. I'm really liking Lock and Load Tactical, and I'm now looking at uh, the physical copies of these this, these Lock and Load Tactical um, games. So yeah, that, that's Lock and Load Tactical Digital. I uh, I'd encourage you to, to yeah check it out.